You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. The shit I've seen as a teenager on my run up to So Solid, through So Solid and into my adulthood, some of the shit I've seen, I shouldn't have seen. I, I think about, I mean, it's this interview, honestly, because it's a platform to share. And I, and I, being a humanitarian, mm-hmm. I'm like, help the world. My nana, before she died, she saw me on the front of um, Evening Standard. She phoned my mum like, is Lisa dead? <laughs> like, because it said, so solid shooting. And it was my face on the front of the cover, but they always used my face so that it it didn't look as bad and mm. it didn't seem as bad. And I was the one that sent got sent to the interview and because I weren't part of all the violent sides. Sometimes we take life for granted as well. Sometimes we're always wanting more. Like yeah. Sometimes it's good to just slow down and go, wait a minute. We've, yeah, definitely. We've got our health and we see other people struggling and like a life ain't that bad. No. I like I'm on and I always, I'm constantly trying to improve. Like mm. Every time I try and level up, I try and get more success. You need to go through more barriers, more pain, yeah. more sacrifices. But sometimes we've already got everything that we need. Yeah. We you just, just got to know. You got to look at it yeah. yourself and go, shit, I've got my mum still. Yeah. And that sometimes makes me angry that I feel like I've been living, waiting for her to die sometimes, you know? Mm-hmm. That does hurt and it makes me very angry Why? sometimes. I don't know, it makes me just so angry that you go through so many things in life you go through so many things in life and it always treats the nicest ones bad you know so it does make me angry sometimes Remember on today's <laughs> guest, we've got Lisa Mafia. How are you, Lisa? I'm really well, thank you. It's good to see you. And you? It's been a long time coming to get this interview happening. It really is. Honestly, it really is. Thank you. Phenomenal career. So solid crew. Kind of put a lot of people on the map. Mm. Some mega names coming from yourself. Mm. Harvey. Mm -hmm. Ash. Mm -hmm. um, Romeo. Handsome bastards, aren't it? <laughs> yeah, they are good looking boys, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Phenomenal for coming from the streets of London to then getting the recognition, winning awards all mm-hmm. over mobiles, Brits. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal. Fair play to you. It, it's been good. It has been good. But a lot of the names and faces that were made from there were, had this stigma for many years that was that it didn't allow us to be exactly who we needed to be to be more successful. I feel like it's nowadays that we've kind of made that pioneer status for ourselves because the music itself has lo- it's lasted forever 21 years to be attacked and 21 it was just, seconds 21 to seconds yeah is it 20 years or tw- i think it's 20 or 21 years in 2021 20, is that that's <laughs> three times platinum yeah well i think we're four now so is yeah. that what well, is platinum every million Pl- yeah, a million yeah so that's four yeah. million yeah that's unbelievable well the last one i saw was 2.6 million, but it said above two, more than 2.6 million. So I think it's about three million, four million yeah. now. We'll touch on Soul Solid Crew later on in the interview. Obviously, you were the only mm. girl in the band at the start. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, phenomenal to do that, especially with surrounded so many alpha males. Mm. Um, you're an OG in the game, even though you're still looking very young. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, I always go back to the start of my guess. Yeah. Where you grew up and how it all began. I grew up in Brixton whilst the boys were all in Battersea, but being a little tear away tomboy that I was, I spent a lot of my time with the boys in Battersea because I just, I came with, you know, the funniest thing is one of my best mates, I I was best friends with her, hence why I even met So Solid, but I ended up with them on my own because I was always that tomboy. I was always the one that, you know, got on the back of the stolen bikes and got in the, you know, got in a little bit of trouble with the lads. The girls weren't on what I was on. So I found myself always end up with the boys. And I think that's probably why I ended up with So Solid. How was your schooling? Uh, I was wicked in primary school, such a good kid, such a wonderful kid, but I was bullied. And when I got to secondary school, you know, when you have that, that thing, I just had that thing, I'm not having it. So anyone who, who's anyone says anything to me, I'm going to just go for him. And uh, I think that's, uh, that affected school. 
badly. How's really. your parents? Is it your dad as Jamaican? Your mum's half Italian? Italian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are, we've got Sicilian, we've got Turin, we are British, we've got Scottish, we've got everything in us. Yeah, got <laughs> Scots have got blood oh, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're a bit of Scott yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, how was your upbringing with them? Mum, I mean, my mum, my dad wasn't around. My dad wasn't around much. And when he did, um, the last memory I have of my dad actually face to face in my house. Um, he came and I remember thinking, shit, I ain't going. He's not taking me. And I was crying upstairs and me and my, it was me and my sister and my mum in that house. And when, when I was upstairs, I said to my sister, don't let him take me. Don't let him. Because I just thought this, this person that's supposed to be my dad that I don't know is come to take me and I'm not having it. <laughs> and feeling so traumatised with it, I begged my sister and my sister's 18 months older than me. I begged her, please don't let him take me. Don't. She said, don't worry, I'm not going to let him take you. I was like, hallelujah, my sister's going to save me. And um, my, I could hear my mum talking to my dad and his friend that was in the front room downstairs and I came I came downstairs and I just I, I peeked around the corner and he was like come in come and say hello to your dad and I was like looking at him like hell no and I feel like where I was so traumatized and so worried my nose started bleeding and instead of coming in the room and saying hello and getting my mum's help I wiped <laughs> my blood down the door frame because I just didn't want to go in there. It was like, I don't know this man and he's going to take me. And, I, and I, I, it was just that fear in me. I think that's why my nose started bleeding. And, um, and my mum said, oh God, her nose is bleeding. She said, oh look, you're worrying her, you need to go. The relief in me that my mum was saying, you need to get out, so leave her alone. It was like, oh my God, thank God, I don't have to go with this man. And... Um, then once go like then once he was gone and he came back again to take me take me out for the day out to get to know me. Um, I said I'm not going unless my big sister goes with me, and uh, and and then she agreed to go with me and we went out for this day out and I just remember just sticking like glue to my sister the whole day thinking I am not getting left with this man this person and that person was my dad and I just couldn't. Couldn't get used to it. Yeah, no bond, no connection. No, none at all. Do you think that's why you became more surrounded with the boys, kind of, for father figure? Do you know what? I was thinking about it, and as soon as I, as soon as I agreed to do this interview, my assistant was like, you you got to do this platform, it's brilliant. And as soon as I thought about it, I was thinking about how deep I want to go, how much I want to express, how much I want to share. Um, and it starts to bring up old things, and you start thinking about why are you like you are, and... Is thinking about what I wanted to share on this platform, it made me think about who I am. It was like a therapy session a bit. <laughs> yeah. And you start going delving into who you are and why you do things. And you might be right, but not having a father figure around. I never actually thought of that. But not having a father figure around might be the reason I was so tomboy to stay in with the boys so that I had that male figure around, you know? Yeah, but it didn't do you any harm. It didn't do you any harm. <laughs> I think... I I think it did in a, in a way because I didn't get to bond with any girls and I didn't get advice from girls. It was all very male, you know, testosterone, yeah. tough, rah, you know. <laughs> the shit I've seen as a teenager on my run up to So Solid, through So Solid and into my adulthood, I, some of the shit I've seen I shouldn't have seen. What have you seen? Too much. Murder. Stabbings. Violence. Mm. What a shot. Yeah. And, ever... and it's been from people, people that are my closest, you know, things that have happened to me, not saying that I, anything abusive would happen to me as a child, but I did see things when I was a kid that I feel I made acceptable to then, to, 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 to cope with it, to cope with that. And then you, and then you, I think then when you cope with that, when you go into your relationships and you go into and you see things or feel things from a partner or from your friends or see stabbings right in your face, it, you, you, I find I made all of that acceptable because I saw it when I was a kid. So it was like... So it became the norm for you? It's the norm. Were you in abusive relationships yourself? Mm, yeah. So you accepted that as if it was normal because you'd seen it all yeah, your life? Yeah, I feel like, I think narcissism lived in all of my relationships. Um, I've only actually had three four relationships I've had a you know a bond with someone that you know I didn't really feel as a relationship but the other I've had three relationships and that was from 13 years old have you ever uh, been in love 
Yeah, I think oh, I think I loved all of them. <laughs> oh, honestly. Yeah. But there comes, you know, but but I comes know. a difference between lust and love where... I don't know I now the, yeah. if I know what love is because how could I say it's love for these yeah. shit relationships that they abuse you mentally or they abuse you... You know what I mean? I just, I don't, I don't know if I know what love is, to be honest. Yeah, probably same. Like, if somebody loves you, then they should not harm you. Mm, they should. So it's not really love. So you've just accepted that it's been normal. Maybe you've seen your mum going through that same shit. Yeah, I did. Where yeah. You becomes, it becomes the norm where you're getting treated like shit. But I always, I kind of speak about it all the time. The Stockholm Syndrome mm. is when people keep going back to the misery because mm. they're, they're connected to it. The it's connection. not that they don't want, mm. it's just they feel like if somebody's been bad to you, then when they start being good, you're thinking, okay, they've changed. They're changed they and it's good yeah, and so it's you, stronger yeah. and it's because they love you. You start making all excuses to shit you just don't, on an order, you wouldn't be acceptable. And I sit there and tell my friends, don't don't have that. Like, don't let him do that to you. Don't let him cheat on you and go back with him. Why are you going to get back with him? But you do it yourself when it's time, you know? Did you get treated well from being in like, the boys at such a young age? Or were you try to be a boy, boy no. just yourself and kind of rebel? So when I was growing up, I, I became one of the boys. Like I was the girl in the boy, like with the boys. No one wanted to sleep with me. No one wanted to make that sort of connection with me because I was so boyish. It was like being one of the boys. And I made sure it was that way because I watched a lot of the girls around me um, getting into sexual relationships growing up and it wasn't turning out right for them. It wasn't good for them. But then I craved, and my sister had a baby really young and younger than me and um in my household it became I became that other person it was my mom and her boyfriend it was my sister and her boyfriend and her baby and then me so I felt like that middle child you know like you need to get I needed to get out of there and I needed to find my own sort of lane my own sort of place and um I couldn't wait to get out so when I ended up with all the team of the boys I was well protected and I felt like I was looking for that a bit family yeah, a new family, but the girls were bitchy. I watched the girls going, like, wanting to sleep with all the boys because we was of that age. But were you protecting, protective over them as well, though? Nah. nah. Because I was one of the lads. I don't know if you understand that. Like, yeah. I was one yeah, of the boys. Yeah, were you protective over the boys, though, when girls nah. tried to sleep with them? Nah, 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 nah. Nah, left them to it. <laughs> I used to be uh. like, girl watch out, like, yeah, she's she's kind of, yeah, she's kind of pretty, and guess what, she's not a slag. I used to give them the insight mm. of who they were, you know? How many was in this group at this time in your teenage years? Oh, before So Solid? Yeah. Oh, wow. There were so many, like, I don't know if I can really count So Solid. Mm -hmm. I can't, because there were so, we had everything in-house, so... There was a lot. There was From so that many. young age? Because I'll, I'll yeah, obviously yeah. the ones I mentioned earlier. There were the some that didn't make so solid, mm -hmm. you know? Who picked? I think it just fell into place. Whoever was the sickest, you know? Mm -hmm. whoever, whoever came forward with something to contribute to So Solid. And the, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. But the 10 artists, like not including Oxide Neutrino, the 10 artists is what everyone knows and they are the artists from the very beginning to the end mm -hmm. but Phenomenal. there were others <laughs> you feel pregnant at 17 how was that were you thinking oh. i was i was desperate to get pregnant were you yeah because it, i knew that was a way out mm -hmm. i knew that was a way out of me being feeling like like the loose end in my own house you know um it helped me get a place. It helped me find myself and who I was. I was a lot, I know a lot of people I say you think you was, but I was actually really grown at 17. I like, I was really grown. I left school a little bit early because I was bullied and I went into college and done my GCSEs, an art and design and photography diploma. I was in work. Um, I was working two jobs. I was going singing school. I was starting so solid. There was so much going on that by, when I got pregnant, it was like, doesn't matter. I'll be yeah. right. But you're working so hard at a young age. Do you think you're running away from something? Yeah, from my from my home life. Yeah. Yeah. Was it tough in there? It wasn't tough. It was wicked. My mum. My mum was the best mum. Like she really took time out for her girls. She didn't go work. She worked from home. She she got us everything we wanted. That we was never ever you know that hard up. My mum made us learn, learn, taught us how to save, taught us how to be as women, to respect ourselves. But there was that connection missing where I didn't feel needed. And I'm a Gemini, so I need all the attention. You do bastard. Yeah. <laughs> Give me all. 
So how did um, when you fell pregnant and you had your daughter? Mm. How did what happened with your life then? Did you realise that you get into the music industry? How did that come about? Because before twenty one seconds, you'd already had a top ten hit. Is that right? Yeah, we had we had oh no, sent mm-hmm. on many things, and unfortunately, we had a record label that weren't not unexperienced, but they made a mistake by putting too many versions of our single on the record and that made it go into the album charts but we, it wasn't an album it was one track and it was loads of different versions and remixes so we didn't chart but we sold we sold ridiculous amount of of records on that first how old were you uh 19 so how did you juggle that then starting to get put into the limelight with your daughter working so, jobs um so at first it was like I was still working. I was still working in an offer license and I took a job in an offer license in Loughborough Junction because I didn't want to go work and leave my baby. So I, I could get to take her to work with me every day. She used to come and work with me in, this, in the offer license. So I took that job and I had that for two years and it was only until the, my status of So Solid was getting bigger and bigger. People were coming in like, wait, ain't you Lisa Mario? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, well, what are you doing in here? <laughs> but my status was getting bigger than who my pocket. I was still doing my little social security stuff and doing my little hustle. And I, like, I didn't have the money. I didn't have the money. I had a bad relationship with Chelsea's dad. So I was on my own and trying to work, trying to do so solid. The boys were getting paid way before me because they were MC and I went on that MC scene. I came as a singer. So I, so I was like working in this offer license for about, I don't know, 150 a week. It was ridiculous money, but it was to help me get out of my situation. And at that time, I didn't really, and I never, ever thought I'd be a musician. I never, ever went into, so into that studio that day to record Oh No and thought I'm going to be famous. I just done it because they asked me to do it. And that's typical me, humanitarian. Mm-hmm. Do what you, you know, help out. <laughs> yeah. And um, it just ended up being changed my career, life. changed my but life. But that's all about the chances in life that if, because the... The vision's not there, yeah. but it's when you actually do something, yeah, yeah. it opens other doors and then yeah. the stronger visions come and you go, wait a minute, fuck me, I can't believe that just happened. But if you took the day off there, your life would be totally different. Mm. It's unbelievable. But the shit I've made, what I've made, what I've come through, I think to myself, how, how, how am I this lucky? Like, how have I ended up here? Like, no plan, no nothing and gone through something so horrific and then gone, shit, this is good, like... I knew some of it must have been coming. What was it even through horrific? Just things. Just like there's so many things. There's it's this interview that's actually unlocked a a lot. Did you see already? Seem emotional. Huh? You already seem quite emotional. Oh oh no, I'm I'm emotional because um, we lost yet another person to Corona today, and I am. I just I feel a little bit like a bit more like. Yeah. And I've Sorry been thinking about, huh? yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. I, I, I think about, I mean, it's this interview, honestly, because it's a platform to share. And I, and I, being a humanitarian, mm-hmm. I'm like, help the world. But a lot of people take inspiration from it because you were pioneers of the game and the hip hop mm. game and from boys from the street. Because mm. 21 seconds, everybody that sings in that, they sing for 21 seconds. They do. <laughs> I didn't know that. What? I did not know that. <laughs> I didn't know that until like two days ago. <laughs> Did you know my real name's Mafia? Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah, you yeah, yeah, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not that bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't know 21 yeah. seconds was 21 I, seconds each. I didn't know that. I did you not didn't. know that, no. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's unbelievable. That's G-Man, that was. G-Man came up with that concept. He was like one of the heads of So Solid and he was the one that took the back seat and like done all the meetings for us. None of us, myself, myself and most of So Solid, we all wanted, we was just dying to be musicians but we all, all had a business sort of way of thinking um of getting ourselves where we needed to get ourselves on a hustle yeah and but you G-Man, must have had a breadhead then mm-hmm. because you're already working two jobs you were mm. already hustling yeah i mean no one i i mean i didn't become lisa mafia because i mean so solid lisa mafia mm-hmm. because of just me it was everyone else's talent that has the same as anyone in so solid our contribution to so solid has made so solid um but uh, Lisa Mafia became Lisa Mafia because I had everyone there to encourage me to be this Lisa Mafia. But I always had a business hustle because I was born into hustling. My mum was a hustler. Yeah. So how did that song come about then? You were saying, G-Man, is that the guy? Do you have a yeah, relationship so, with him? Yeah, I did. Yeah, 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 I did. How um, did that affect that? 
Uh, no, we were co- we were good because we knew each other from 13 years old. The same as I knew also Solly from 12, 13 years old. But um, yeah, it didn't affect so Solly. He was a bit jealous though, G-Man. G-Man, sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> he was a little bit of a, a, a little bit jealous guy. Like he would be like, why are you standing there chatting to everyone? Why are you, I'm over there? I'm like, sorry, mate. Yeah. <laughs> But I think that came with the status, like the bigger I was getting, the more attention, the more, attention, the more it must have been difficult for him because we were young, shit. We were so young. And it was him that came up with 21 seconds. Yeah, he's a G. That G man is a G. He changed, <laughs> changed lives for that track. He really did. How did he pick who was going to sing in it? No, so what happened is Oh No got so big on the like underground um, that G was like, how are we going to get the rest of these damn artists all out at the same time? Like, we need to get everyone out there in one bang. How? How are we going to do that? So he broke it up. Because when you're doing a record, it's three, I think it three, three minutes something or two minutes something. Whatever it was, he worked out that with 21, bars, 21 seconds of bars each, we could all get on this fucking record. So it was like, that was like, we like, what an mm-hmm. absolute genius. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and then we did it thinking it outside worked. the box man I don't think it's <laughs> ever been done with so many people singing no, no. on a record I think I think, I think, think it has but in not that many people yeah. in a perfect sequence you know so how, see when you've done it did yeah. you think we've got a banger here or <laughs> just, are we just going with the flow I don't know if what, maybe some of the boys did I didn't because I, I didn't really think any of the records that we were making were <laughs> going to be anything <laughs> I just never really thought anything about anything I just was like kind of going going with the flow and when did see when it popped what, what, what was their life like then how hard was that or was that easy i was thinking about this last night like was it easy no because even like my i think like now i think back and i'm wiser and got a business head and know how shit goes and shouldn't go um and think back of who helped who didn't to be honest, I kind of would have been better off with someone else backing me, someone else looking after me, because my management was the same management as So Solid. So whilst I was in So Solid, it was fine, but I didn't really get shit out of being just in So Solid. It was until not until I went solo, then I started getting paid from So Solid and as a solo artist, because I had my own thing going on and I was contributing to this big old, you know, drama that we were making. Where when I was in So Solid, management was exactly the same. So, sorry, when I came out and was on solo, when I was a solo artist, my management and So Solid management is the same. So it's conflict of interest. So anything I actually wanted to do was asked by So Solid if it worked for everyone. So all the shit that So Solid went through kind of became my shit on my solo yeah. career, you know? So when I do reflect back, I think I would have had more success by being a solo artist with somebody else over there doing my thing. A bit like Romeo did. He was like separate. Mm-hmm. That can be a difficult thing, especially it's good when everybody's working at the start and it's a team and it's fresh mm. and it's new. Mm. But then the more people, the more problems are there soon because yeah. everybody's got different ideas, different visions, wanting more money. They deserve this. Did that become a hindrance then because yeah, there was so many did. people involved? It kind of did because... No matter what I did, luckily, luckily though, I, you know, I have to give thanks for this. And I was thinking about this again the other, a couple of days ago is that luckily for me, people, I would nice to people on the way up and on the way down. So I never really got that real bad backlash every time So Solid were up to some sort of shit, <laughs> you know. When every time they got up to something, it kind of, I kind of got that put Lisa on the front cover, you know, use her, she'll soften the blow. <laughs> that angelic face, yeah. call her the angelic mm-hmm. voice, you know. My nana, before she died, she saw me on the front of um, Evening Standard. She phoned my mum like, is Lisa dead? And like, because it said, so solid shooting. And it was my face on the front of the cover, but they always used my face. 
so that it it didn't look as bad and mm. it didn't seem as bad. And I was the one that sent got sent to the interview. And because I weren't part of all the violent sides, I would go in there and like, oh, I don't know, but they're really nice boys, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It would be me like, but they're really nice. You know, just the other day, they went and got me breakfast in the morning on tour and have a little giggle about it. And then the interview would be nice to me and then a little nice story goes out. So in theory, it was tough for Lisa Mafia yeah. because Lisa Mafia was that only girl. So that was the time I became that girl. I never, I wasn't one of the lads anymore. Like they used me differently. Yeah, do you think a lot, a lot especially with becoming so successful, there's so many people that was in So Solid mm. Crew that are so talented. Mm. Do you think you were stereotyped as well for to have the gangster rap image instead of just letting them do their talent? Obviously the bad shit comes with it. There's been bad shit that's happened, but do you think a lot of pressure came on the boys that they had to, because when they got the gangster rap label, that they had to live up to the reputation? Mm. I don't think the boys, I don't think the boys had a choice in a lot of shit that went down around So Solid because unfortunately for them, our status was huge before our pocket. And then when our pocket got bigger we was all very much in the same area we never had that advice from anybody that come out of the hood like how we have where we could now advise people like get your money get the heck out of the hood and you know put your money into really good things where we were sitting on you know one point some million in the hood yeah. <laughs> we had tts and and all these expensive cars and diamond watches in the hood we because no one ever told us to we didn't think Investing. Get your mum, get your, get your sisters, brothers, get them out, get your kids, get them out, get them out, take them away. Where we just thought, we'll stay in our community and we'll help. Where that's not the best place for you when you're on your rise. You can help better from far away, you know? And we didn't have that advice. A lot of leeches then. See the mm. see everything and then yeah, the and that's where a lot of it comes. I mean, it wasn't that far away of all the trouble that we had. They they a lot of people weren't strangers. They were people that we knew. So has that become more difficult then? Mm. So then everybody's want a piece of you. But if you're being from the streets in the hood that you mm. say, you try and help other people because you don't want to forget yourself. You do well. That's where that's what hindered a lot of my solo career because I stayed very loyal to So Solid. I didn't go outside with outside writers. I didn't go and do any collaborations with anyone else. My management didn't help because as I said, the conflicts of interest stay with So Solid. Let So Solid pr produce the album, produce this, write this. I didn't come into So Solid as a musician. I came in as a person that loved music and as a hobby, you know? So, it did hinder, it did hinder a lot of my career and the boys because the boys didn't get to really experience much straight away, you know, the, but the, the things that we experienced at the beginning were all negative. Who was that in the press all the time, all negative press? It's was that draining. difficult? Is that... Listen, I came to a club, I turned up at a club after the Astoria shooting and um, I turned up to a club in Watford and they had metal detectors. It was my solo career gig, just me. I used to roll with just a security and my DJ. So it was just us three. They got checked, you know, you used to have the record bags and stuff, right? So he, he, he went through, my DJ went through, my security were behind me. I had a skirt on, no lie, back in the 90s, we had skirts that were about <laughs> that big, yeah? <laughs> They, they were tiny and a little see-through bodysuit thing on, right? So you could see everything. The motherfuckers searched me. It was that disrespect that they couldn't risk anything. They, they fucking searched me with a, nothing on. I had no clothes on. And that is where I saw that we were making so much noise and so many things were happening around me that it was hindering my career. Uh, do you think racism comes into play as well? Mm, oh, most people definitely. People from the streets are doing well for most themselves. Most definitely. Listen, the press kill people. They fuck people over. But yeah. they also raise careers. Obviously, mm. if you've got the right PRs and all that shit. But kids from the streets coming from the streets of London, flying, mm. people not expecting it. Do you think, right, we can fuck them over here as well? Mm, definitely. I think I think that's that's been a massive part of black music from the very beginning black music artists from, from the very beginning. Is that difficult then? 
Did you ever want? You know, quirk? I came from I came from a time where it was difficult to be mixed race. Like light skinned people have come on the map since. <laughs> like to be light skin is a thing now. Back when I was young and starting out, it was like you weren't black, so you weren't accepted by the black, and you got a white family, and you weren't white because you're brown. So I was like in the limbo. I was like, "Hey, <laughs> like me? Mm. Do you know what I mean?" So yeah, I, I, it's it's been tough. It's been a tough ride because his career was just. When was the murder? Who was it? Is it Carol Morgan? Hmm? Was it was, who's Carol Morgan? Is that the boy who done the murder? Carol Morgan. Carl Morgan. Yeah, Carl Morgan. Is he in so yeah, yeah, he's in, yeah, he's in, he's in jail for. I think he got thirty, 30 years. years. When that was that, when you were just popping off as well. That was like kind of after though. That's like after the real big hype of So Solid. I think. Did that give us another wave is. though of hate and that negativity? Started, that actually were uh, for a lot of people in the industry. It was confirmation of what they said we were. Oh, well, there you go. Mm -hmm. You know, someone's been murdered. It's that sort of attitude. They hadn't looked at the case. They probably didn't even think about the case. They didn't think about who the person was, whether he was actually so solid, no, a prime person of, of so solid. They didn't look at anything. They didn't look at anything. They didn't care who Cole Morgan was, which is a, a, he's the most pure hearted person you will ever meet. Pure, like so pure. How did that affect your career? Mm, luckily for me, I was on a new wave by the time that unfortunately happened to Carl Morgan. Because you went solo and you got a top mm. 10 number two straight away? Yes. Easy peasy. Yeah. <laughs> so were you thinking, were you trying to break away from it? At any time? No, I didn't. I didn't break away from it. My management at the time said, "This is how. This is how. This is how it was conflict of interest." Because when So Solid started going down with so much stigma, and I was the only one left, now management wanted to back me. Yeah. <laughs> now they're telling me to say, "Say you're not from So Solid." In you know, don't tell no one you're from So Solid. Tell them they had every headline saying fool my soul solid all of a sudden I'm like who the fuck told them to say that because I ain't fool my I was there repping still that is my crew I'm not gonna be called fool my so solid and then management's in the background yes you are because now so solid can't be used now they want to use me better how and hard is that in the music industry getting told what to do and say well you don't you know what it's a fucking life any musician stands there and says management said I can't do that bollocks because they're you're, they're being paid by you so you can actually do what the fuck you want. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So people just making excuses people use that, that they're saying that like, shit. They, obviously, it's good to you sometimes, but don't let no one bullshit you. If that artist really wants to fucking do it, they're going to do it. Yeah. Trust me. Unless it was just us because we were so solid. Because I know that we had creative control over everything that existed. So no, so they, management didn't do, didn't tell me to do that. They did it. So they had access to all the press. They used to write the short bios. They used to dictate what's being said and where we use what and pull the strings. So they would have said before my interview, headline would be, Lisa Mafia, former so solid. Mm -hmm. You know, so they, because they wanted to make sure they capitalised off a of Lisa Mafia, not so solid Lisa Mafia. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Was so yeah, it was, was tough that? because on the other end, I'd be like screaming so solid and that then I, I wouldn't be allowed in certain things and do certain things because I wouldn't leave the name alone. Do you know what I mean? Was there a lot of conflict between everybody when the money started coming in? No, I mean, so solid cut a check from Lisa Mafia when I got signed. Um, I paid so solid through writing, production, so everyone got their little, if you worked, you got paid, you know? If you mm -hmm. didn't work, you didn't get paid. Yeah. So solid. How was it going, winning Brit Awards and Mobiles? How was that feeling when you've got nominated? There was so much because going on. Because you've been nominated from So Solid and Solo. Mm. Fucking easy, isn't it? Easy gig. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, Is it weird? those things are weird because you, for me... I kind of like, I was excited by it, but I had so much going on in my life in general. I didn't really appreciate it as much as I do now. And at the time I kind of like, I kind of like just thought, shit, this is, this is good, isn't it? Like, this must be good. This is me. But you don't really register. It doesn't register at the time. Mm -hmm. 
Because the boy is it Ashley Walters. Uh-huh. What's his real name? Ash D. Ashley Walters. Is it Ashley? His real yeah, name. I thought yeah. had another name. No. Who was in the Fifty Cent film? It's Ashley um, D. Usually. Yeah. So sorry, remember. Yeah. And yeah. Um, get Richard die trying and that top boy. Mm. Phenomenal career, man. Yeah, that kid's has. achieved and yeah. Are you still in contact well. with? You Ash. know he started from like Grange Hill back yeah, in the day. Yeah. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And he's still on a new journey now. He's doing like. Uh, there's loads of new ones that he's got coming yeah, out. Yeah, see all it's popping up in the sky. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, got, he's, he's covered over mm. sky. He's got the whole of it unlocked. You must be buzzing then that like people have st- are still kicking on and producing the goods from yeah, 20 years ago. I mean, there's not many of us actually active in music. The, mo- the main two active on stage week in, week out before Corona, this damn pandemic, uh, was is me and Romeo? We are like out there, like. Big, but then that all came about because in So Solid, when it all got torn down with the bad press and stuff, and we weren't allowed to go anywhere, do anything. I went on to being a solo artist, and even that came to a stop. And the the label had put loads of money into other artists. They thought I'd sell it. I would sell myself because of the success of So Solid and Lisa Matthews beginning of a career. It didn't. And the, once the sales, they had spent so much money. I think my first video was like two hundred and eighty thousand pounds. It was ridiculous money back then. And they recoup all that off of your off your record sales. And obviously, when that ain't coming back in, they've got no budget left, so they don't want to promote anything else to sell the album. So when that started to affect Lisa Mafia, I decided. And remember, the management that I had, they were all for it because they only had Lisa Mafia left now. It's so solid. No everyone else, no one wanted to touch. So. When that started slowing down, I just refused. Again, my hustle nature kicked in and I said, I'm not having this. So I got rid of my tour management. I got rid of my security. I had my boyfriend drive me up and down the country. Uh, I had him and his friends come with me so that I'd be all right. And I started collecting numbers and opened my own booking agency and started booking myself. And after a while of doing that, I became that girl on the on the club scene because everyone else out of garage had kind of been banned because of the stigma around garage music in general. So myself, I, 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 as normal, I don't ever want to do anything on my own. I like someone there. I've, I've realized I don't like doing it on my own. I like seeing success and unfolding success with someone. And, I, and me and Romeo were the two on the scene at the time. So we started going, I think it was, we first got together and made that Lisa Matthew Romeo duo in Magaluf. I think we yeah. did Magaluf. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but me and Romeo were doing that alternative weeks and we used to go Cos, Valaraki, all the islands, Malia, Zanti, Ayanapa. We used to be going, I would go one week and he would go the next week. And it was like that. And we were chasing behind each other around all these islands, this island tour. And I um, and I, I, I we was on a show together once, and I said, "Rones, let's do this together. We could actually like I've got all the numbers. Come, we start doing this together, like and charge a little bit more, do a bigger set because it's me and you solo career together plus the so solid music. Let's start doing this together and making like a like a, a proper like showcase almost." And it started to work. And then we started getting further afield, like the Dubai and Australia and all of the London gigs started to come back on because it was like, shit, this is the So Solid feeling without all of So Solid on stage where it's dangerous right now. No one wants to do that. The club will get locked off. Mm-hmm. So me and Romeo started to take our lane together. How was it when you were booking out arenas, but then they were getting closed down? Oh my God, that was heartbreaking because even myself, I had financed a lot of raves. Um, and started to get the gigs for myself and, you know, put the show on myself and do the lineup and everything. Um, and I would get to the day. We had something in St. Albans in Batchwood Halls and it got to the day. There was probably about 1,500 people outside waiting 10 minutes before opening. And we knew something was going to happen that day because the police had already called the club and said, listen, if you go ahead and something happens, we're revoking your licence. And they came to me and they said that, like, they're going to revoke our license. And I said, listen, I'll pay for, I'll pay £1,700 for another 10 police or whatever it was. And that should shut them up, right? And it was like, yeah, sure. So I paid this extra money to get these extra police down there. And they fucking locked it off 10 minutes before opening. They just locked it off. They said, no, nah, we had another death threat for Lisa Mafia. So I was like, Who the, no one wants to fucking kill me. If they did, 
any of these stages I'm on, they could just come and get me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? There Do you was think no that was one. just an excuse to shut you down? Yeah, because there was that risk. But there, there must have been a bit risk. of fear that people were getting shot and killed prior. There was that risk. There was that risk from other raves. There was that risk that people would come there to find someone else that's into the garage scene. The garage scene was like today's grime scene. Like it was, it was massive. It, was, it still is as big. It's 20 years deep. And we're, we're no stranger to the state, stage with the same music we made 21 years ago. Yeah. So it's not like... It, it was just known around the violence. So it didn't matter that it was a so solid rave. It didn't matter they needed that excuse to, to shut the rave. Did you ever feel like walking away then and thinking, Oh my God, I've wanted this. to walk. I've hit rock, bo rock, rock bottom three times since the beginning of my career. Like zero money, not knowing what the fuck I'm going to do. I started a nursing degree where it got that bad. I said to myself, you know what? I need, I want a career that means something. Um, and I don't want to work for no one. So I decided to start a nursing degree. Unfortunately, I didn't get to ever finish because music started again. Mm. And it fucking brought me back again. Like, <laughs> I was like, all right, nursing degree, I'll come back to uh, you. And I went back three times, I went back to that nursing degree. How hard is it though to be getting smash hits, to then getting solo career, mm? to then when things mm. start declining? How is that for an artist when you start getting all the negative hate from all the love? How difficult is that for someone to handle, especially coming from the streets, it's not been really media trained, and to getting all that pressure and then thinking, fuck me, should, I need to find another path when really the music is what you love, being surrounded by people that you, you trust. Because you say that you want to, you need somebody there, but that, for me, that means like a wee bit of abandonment issues there. You can't, you don't want to do mm, it alone. It's not mm. that, because we all get fucking lonely, don't we? Especially for a young girl who's wanting, who's achieving big mm. things and you've not got that father figure there. You're having to put your trust onto people that you don't know, whether that's mm. managers or people behind mm. it. How hard was it though for when things went down a down like a decline when you said you were battling mentally? I think I feel like I feel like the decline makes you who you are. That's where the growth is. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like it's where you find your strength when you're down. And even when I was up, I felt down at times. You know, so I feel like them lessons that you learn when you've had it all. Being, this one again, like being how I am has got me in so much shit because I want to help. Every time I'm up, I'm like, let me help you do that. Let me put your money, let me put some money into that for you and watch someone else have that power with the money that I've made because I feel like I've had it easy, you know? So it's not that I like it down there, but sometimes that place down there is where you learn something new about yourself. Yeah, that's the place where you'll find your inspiration. That's the place because you're clearly a fighter, mm. even at the ages of 16, 17, working two jobs mm. to feed your kid, just mm. constantly pushing the boundaries. Even now you're still hustling. <laughs> even now you're still pushing the bar and, and want to be better. And mm. like Everybody <laughs> hits lows, everybody hits lows, but it's how you handle those lows that's going to make you kick on again. But you try to help everyone. I was the same, constantly trying to help everyone. But the ones you help end up fucking you over anyway. Oh, man. And when your shit hits the fan, nobody's there to be I seen. I just feel like I choose all the wrong fucking people to help. <laughs> 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 I feel like I choose all the rotten ones to help. Yeah, but you'll get good karma for helping anyway. No matter if it comes fucking back and bites you in the ass. Can I have some? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. I'm still waiting for uh -huh. it. Like, I, honestly, I don't regret. I have no regrets. I feel like sometimes if you live with those regrets, is that's what is more damaging than the actual scenario that's happened. Mm -hmm. I feel like just I, I, everything's a lesson to me, and I just feel like God only gives you the you know toughest things, the, the strongest people, the toughest things to go through. Of course, but anybody that's come through the garage scene or the hip hop scene would have done anything for half the career that you guys have had. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And you're still doing it. So That's why I don't complain. Yeah, you've got don't to complain. look at the, the positives. I've, I've, I've seen half of the Gary scene that are so sick. Like they, and they haven't had the success that So Solid has. And, and I can only give thanks that I have been in those positions with my boys from So Solid that we made, we made a life for ourselves, you know? And we were able to do that off the back of our talent. Like a talent I didn't even flip in know I had. You know, I didn't. <laughs> I, I wanted to be a vet or an architect. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's only because I was, 
I got screwed over in school that I didn't even think about a career. I just needed to survive. I had a baby at 17, a year after leaving school. I was like, I'm in survival mode. Like I grew up real quick. Yeah. <laughs> and that growing up is, uh, is who's made me today. So what's made me today. And, and luckily for me, I had a bunch of talented people that scooped me up right at, in the right time and, mm. and gave me a career. In 2010, you got back together. 2010 we got back together we'd done a, a, a our very first tour ever um which was sick like i i don't even know how many people are there but it was um at the o2 they sold out sold they? out like three times over we had to put on a second a second date that i didn't go to um Why? uh there was some disagreements uh and i'm my own boss uh, I, don't know. The I am the fucking you. boss of myself, yeah. so then disagreements. I pu- I I pull away. I do I do run my I do run my life and everything about me on emotion, and sometimes that's dangerous, and sometimes it's not. But I'm not gonna have anyone talk disrespectfully or treat me like shit. Do you know what I mean? But then I also it hurts when someone does, so I just run the other way. And rather than confront it sometimes when it's someone I really love. I'll have your argument. I'm not scared to have the argument, but I'll get the other way and get away from it and pull myself away, even if it means it will uh, affect my career. Do you things. miss that? Do I miss So Solid? Yeah. I miss So Solid, the fun that we had. I do miss it. But luckily for me, I've been able to continue as Lisa Mafia, mm-hmm. which is Because obviously movie. looking back, it's the madness that you miss as well, even though yeah. it's a drama. There's a part of you something inside that you think, fuck me, I miss the madness. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't drink and I'm not taking drugs anymore. <laughs> yeah. But every day I think, I fucking <laughs> Just miss. Just one day of yeah, that madness. Just, <laughs> because what happens is it's, a, it's an escape. It's um, not being selfish for a day or not giving a fuck. So when you start mm. getting responsibilities, when you start doing well for yourself, mm-hmm. The responsibilities and the pressure that come on you is unbelievable. And I've never tasted this. This was what we were saying earlier that you this do, is all yeah, but it's new. like your fame, like you're yeah, famous, James. Yeah. Like what you're going Semi-shit. through. It yeah, must be it's, scary. It's like. only beginning because I know where I'm going to take what this. You but do. Yeah, I know exactly where I'm, I'm going to go. So you're lucky you knew you know the steps that you're taking. Yeah. I didn't even realise. You were through right into a limelight. I've took baby steps yeah. and baby steps yeah, yeah, to growth yeah, yeah. and growth. So I'm starting to handle that. Yeah. Um, but every time you level up, man, fuck me, man. The, the shit that comes with that is, I'm only interviewing people. <laughs> Listen, I tell you what, yeah. I've only experienced a few times, but someone trying to abuse me because I am famous. Like, I've only had that a very few times. And so, and a lot of the, the people, the, 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 the few times I have been through that, they're people that I fucking know, you know? They know a lot more about me or, and they know they how to hurt me. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's from inside, that's from the inside, <laughs> you know. I can't imagine if I would have been horrible to anyone out there, what they might fucking try to do on the yeah. success journey that I've been mm-hmm. on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Luckily, I've been nice to people, you know? That's the only thing you can be, but sometimes yeah. if you've got that boss lady mentality, if you've got that sometimes, listen, you've been surrounded by alpha males your whole life, so it can be difficult when you think, who are you fucking testing? Do you know what, though? I feel like... Because of how big I was in the 90s, one thing I'm so fucking glad that we didn't have was internet. It weren't part of our career because mm-hmm. do you imagine how many things we've been up to, the success things and the bad things, what people might have been saying to us on social media. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't, we didn't have that. Like you only saw us in your magazine or on your TV screen. Do you know what I mean? We came from that day. Where now, <laughs> when you're famous, they can one click of the button, they're with you. Yeah, you know? everybody's they're got really an ass. opinion, yeah, yeah. The bastards. And, yeah, yeah. It's quick like that. Mm-hmm. I've experienced it recently. I went through something with someone, a friend that I was helping out. And as soon as she said one bad word, it got taken up by the blogs and the blogs then spiraled it out of control. They had, I think they had like 180,000 followers and within, a, within 10 minutes of her saying that, I was getting called a, I was getting called a whore. I was getting, I was like, not that I gave a fuck because luckily these people weren't anything to do with me. They don't know anything about me. There was a younger market. The blogs, they're all kids. Like they're just, they're keyboard worrying and they didn't know nothing about me or, or have, or they wouldn't even flipping buy my records. So I was laughing at it, but I was like, after 24 hours of abuse, it stopped. And I was like, 
For fuck's sake, 20 something years in the industry and I'm only worth 24 hours of abuse, you cans. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? How do you handle that? How did you handle that? I just, I was cracking up. I thought it was hilarious, but I can only, it did make me emotional on the other side as well because I just kept thinking, shit, if this was the 23 year old me when I started out and I was huge and this happened to me, I probably could have killed myself. Yeah, me too. Me too. And, so and, that's, and that's because it never stopped for 24 hours. And I can laugh because, like I said, I'm grown, I'm tough, I've been through shit worse than flipping keyboard warriors. It doesn't bother me. And the girl that was doing it, I was more heartbroken that she did that to me, to be honest, because I had little, like, little love for her. She's like my little sister. But then on the other side of things, like the abuse I was getting, I was like, nah. If I was 23, I would have topped myself because it just didn't stop. And it was all these strangers that have this opinion about you. Yeah, and you feel the energy from it. Look, Caroline yeah. Flack. Yeah, it's, it was... I think she's actually a year past today. Is a yeah, year already? Year today, past yeah. Year. So it is. It's, social media is playing a massive effect on people's mindsets. I'm actually going to do six weeks without it. Yeah, to, are you? Yeah, yeah just to recharge, cleanse. And, oh, yeah, I'm telling you. I let I've my three, do I've it. been three years straight now. So we do all on this it. shit ourselves, and it's... I always answer people back as well. You can't like, help it, innit? Yeah, just be That's because nice, you're hard. Yeah, heart. I'm soft as I'm shit. I'm the same yeah. as well. I'm exactly the same. But then, listen, same. man, I can fucking flip that switch. Like, people might see just an interview or this and that, but I've got that fucking switch that. But this is the thing. You have to be careful of that, yeah. James, because we all have that in our heart. Yeah. I'm not having it. Like, you can't get to me. And if you think you're going to get to me, I'm going to end up telling you about yourself so that I, you don't do it to someone else. And I, at the end, I'll say, yeah, and you'll think fucking twice about starting on a girl again, won't you? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm more like that, but it makes me emotional because as I said, for 24 hours, I was abused. And had I been that 23 year old girl at the very beginning, that would have been a whole different story. When you look at everybody's competing against each other. Everybody's got filters. Even when I'm doing a story, sometimes I'll put a filter on and I'm thinking, what the fuck? Filters, I love a filter. I know, I'm getting older shit. Yeah, I need a filter. You see the, <laughs> the young girls all competing and looking at, you go to school as well and everybody's taught to wear uniforms. Everybody dresses the same. Mm. Now people who's got older are conditioned to think everybody should be dressing the same. So mm -hmm. everybody's using the filters. The most beautiful girls on the planet have all got filters. Don't think they're good enough. I think one of the Kardashians put a photo up and girls were fucking suicidal over it. Just looking at her, thinking that Shit. everybody sees the world differently, but we're conditioned now to. I'm glad. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm really glad I came. I'm really glad I'm old as shit. <laughs> because <laughs> I have missed that. Like, I, I still know how to hustle on my own without social media. I know how to make my money to get the attention without social media. I know that I'm okay without social media. And a lot of the girls today, I guess they just don't know that. Yeah. And that's sad, man. Your daughter was on 21 seconds at the very she start was, of the yeah. video. Yeah. yeah, my baby girl, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. That's nuts, yeah. isn't it? She still gets a royalty. <laughs> <laughs> Mama got you paid. Yeah. <laughs> obviously, it's still popping that song. It's still popular. So you get your royalties, you're still mm. getting across every from Every six that. months, yeah. Every that's six months, like clockwork. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> Ching, ching. Yeah, because people are for like, like TV and that, ads and shit, people yeah. using it, singing it. The funny thing is, is that, like I said, I, I was lucky enough to have a solo career. And even after my solo career, I had other records like Bad Girl at Night, uh, Don't Stop the Music. There's lots of different records that I've done after Lisa Mafia's solo career, so solid career. And then I've had a, like a third wave of music. So, and it all pays. And that's that sometimes... When you hit rock bottom, rock bottom, you get that two, three grand and you're like, hell yeah. yeah. Helps, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, you get one big check, like 10 grand, and then you get one little check, three grand. You're like, woo, mm -hmm. <laughs> what can I do with Would this? Would you ever do like a comeback to a 25th anniversary in the next few years? I don't know if I would. I don't know. Put yourself through it all again. No man. I think you would. I don't know. I feel like it. You know, the worst thing is, is that I've cut like a lot of deals for so solid. Like, you know, just. Why are you so loyal to it? Because there's more. There's there's a few in so solid that I don't agree with, but some of them they're my childhood friends. I love them. Yeah, but I don't think they would mind if you were getting a crust elsewhere. Oh no, I, just listen. Listen, I've actually done that. Mm -hmm. I've stepped away and done my own thing. 
Um, but I still have my loyalty to So Solid because that made me, you know, So Solid and all them people and all the whole movement and everyone's talent. That made Lisa Mafia. I'm, I wouldn't be Lisa Mafia without that. Yeah, you're solid, man. I know you're, you're big um, <laughs> on the cancer front and I know your mum got diagnosed mm. with cancer and that really affected you. How was that going through all that? When you were just a few years ago. So 2010 ago. when yeah. we, when we, that's when my mum first got yeah. cancer. And I was doing music and it was a little bit like going down again. I think, you know, we got paid from 10 grand for 10 minutes on the stage to a grand to 10, 10 minutes on the stage. You know what I mean? So you could tell the difference. People still say that's a lot of money, 10 minutes of work. But that was how different things was for me. Um, in 2010 and I opened House of Mafia which was at the time a clothing brand that was um, an umbrella for upcoming um, upcoming clothing brands streetwear brands being a humanitarian again I wanted to not do anything on my own so I opened up an umbrella the House of Mafia umbrella going to bring everyone through and it was going really well I was dressing people for red carpets and all sorts of things was going on and mum got cancer and um, that was around the same time that So Solid were deciding to do a comeback single and like my heart was all over the place I was desperate to be back in music and and you know hype again House of Mafia was going really well mum then got cancer and I just said fuck it I don't want nothing to do with anything and I just hid away and took my mum to hospital every day and unfortunately my mum is um terminal cancer and she's still going through it now yeah, it's difficult, mm. but fair play because mm. I know you've been spoke out very bigly on it. I think you're on Loose Women. What mm. was you doing a film morning? You just have your tits out and that. What was it you were doing? Was it, was it Sorry. Uh, every time I say, say my mum's name, I don't know what happens. Um, so I done uh, the full Monty. Got me tits out for the boys. <laughs> the tits out for <laughs> 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 I want my tits out on national TV. <laughs> Shit, then. Well, no. there was a few you've done it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I got great tits, all right. <laughs> so I got my tits out for for raising awareness for cancer. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was for mum as well. Like I've done something. I mean, every year since my mum's had cancer, I've been one to get into charities for that. For but that's where you'll get that fighting spirit. Your mum, mm. she's clearly a fighter. I lost my dad to leukemia. And, he was in remission and then he get a phone call that you've got three months left Sorry, and man. part of you always thinks that they'll survive and then when you see them just keep deteriorating and deteriorating you think fuck well my mum my mum every time I, every time it's come back they've always said like she's got three months she's got six months and she's fought it time and time again it's like um sorry that's okay man uh and she's such a fight you know and if it's like i think this is a, 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 sorry that's okay take your time <laughs> Right, so, yeah, no, it's the third time. It's the third time it's come back for my mum. And um, every time it comes back, you just don't know, do you? Yeah, it's difficult. But Mm-mm. again, that's where you'll get that fighting spirit. And yeah. You've just got to keep kicking on. And she's still here and you've just always got to be there. And that's where you'll probably, mm. that's where you get that. Yeah, it is. Never quit, never die mentality. My mum my mom brought us up, just her, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, my dad went around and stuff and... I watched, I mean, she's weird as well. My mum's weird as hell. Because she's, like, she's got issues as well. And I always say, like, sometimes you don't realise how much childhood trauma dictates your life, you know? And as much as you sit there and think, like, you've got this anxiety or this, and you say, oh, it's because of the problems you're having now. Usually it's from childhood trauma. And my mum's been through some damn things. And I think to myself, shit, she fought cancer since 2010. Like, that is nuts. Like, she's got to be stronger than what sometimes she seems, you know? Yeah. And that's amazing. And that does give me strength. Of course, man. Yeah. You, like, sometimes we take life for granted as well. Sometimes we're always wanting more. Like, yeah. Sometimes it's good to just slow down and go, wait a minute. Yeah, we've, definitely. We've got our health and we see other people struggling and like, our life's ain't that bad. No. I like, I'm on and I always, I'm constantly trying to improve. Like, mm. every time I try and level up, I try and get more success. You need to go through more barriers, more pain, yeah. more sacrifices. But sometimes we've already got everything that we need. Yeah, we you just, just got to know. You got to look at it yeah. yourself and go, "Shit, I got my mum still." Yeah, and that sometimes makes me angry that I feel like I've been living, waiting for her to die. Sometimes you know, mm-hmm. that does hurt and it makes me very angry. Why? Sometimes I don't know. It makes me just so angry that you go through so many things in life 
you go through so many things in life and it always treats the nicest ones bad, you know? So it does make me angry sometimes. And some yeah, things, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sorry, it's so tough to talk about mum. I've been thinking about it the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> but again, mm. she would be proud of you for what yeah. you've achieved from where you've came from to yeah. standing on your own two feet and working two jobs. And that's for anybody watching. Like, I know plenty of girls out there who've just had their kid and have just accepted. Yeah. They're just living to die, basically. Yeah, they've yeah, they've yeah. accepted that life. Like, you've not. That's a difficult thing. It's, it's easy to not care. It's easy to just give up in life because... There becomes no responsibilities. Mm. But you're constantly wanting to protect your family and, and be there. Mm. You still need to make income. You still need to yeah. go and push yeah. yourself through these boundaries. Like even things on the newspaper, the news, that's enough to put anybody back in their shell. Nah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I always always use always feel that like use the negative situations to your benefit, man. Like it's not nice when you're going through it. it sure doesn't feel like you're gonna come through it sometimes. But you gotta use that to give you so much more power. Never allow, because once you once you have allowed a bad situation to take over and stop you from doing this one, they've won. Whoever the person is won. The, the, how you feel about it is everything is against you. You have to come against it and say, "I'm gonna use this to make me stronger." Yeah, exactly. Mm. And that's all you can do. Like, we're all struggling in life. We all we all have loss. We all have pain. Yeah. But it's how we make it affect us. How do we react to it? Do we make it fuel us to kick on again? Because sure as fuck, five years time, ten years time, there's going to be more shit. There's <laughs> yeah. going to be more <laughs> shit. Eventually, you just think, fuck me again. You just think, uh, again, it's always like happened me, to again. me. Yeah, but we kind of think it's only us, but it's everybody battles that. You know what, though? Sometimes what, what you're going through, is it's just meant for you. How are you handling life now? Uh, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm actually better than I've, I've felt ever in my life at this point. I feel like this pandemic has changed me dramatically because I've been forced to, again, to change roles. I've been forced again to strip back and say, right, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm going to have to do. This is because I, I just refuse to quit, you know? Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, yeah, I just refuse. I refuse. I refuse because I feel like everyone that's done me wrong, they've won. And I ain't allowed nobody from my past to win because I never done shit to them for the things they did to me. So I'm mm. about to win out here. <laughs> you it's know what funny I mean? though that when you, you do win, that uh, as the people, some people closest to you that hate it, mm. and mm. that's what fries me. Like, we receive thousands and thousands of messages per week. I thrive on the negatives, negative. the 100, 200 negatives. Do you get negative re yeah. reviews? Yeah, oh, yeah, they would, yeah, and I just think, fuck it. Because I think, why Why is people got so much a bee in their bonnet? I only fucking interview They're people. They're so fucking bored. Yeah. <coughs> to be honest, it's the negative fuckers. It's the negative fuckers that will be there mm -hmm. when you're down. It's not going to be the ones thinking, oh, poor James, yeah. poor Lisa. Mm -hmm. It's not them. It's always going to be the ones mm -hmm. that have a negative opinion. And even if they're your mates, they are going to be the ones there going, well, do you know what, mate? James, I didn't think it was going to work. Yeah. Like, fuck you, mate. I'm down. Don't kick me. Yeah. Do you know That's what I mean? the funny thing in life. Like everybody speaks out about mental health. It's always all, oh, look out for mental health. I'm here if you need me. You can mm. slip into my DMs if you want to speak to somebody. But... If you're not feeling great, if you feel like shit, everybody How? will give you support mm. and they will try and help you. Mm. But as soon as you start succeeding mm. and becoming better than them and bigger than them, mm. whatever it is, they no fucking you. hate you for it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Why not support people when they're and flying it high? It doesn't actually mean you're all right when you're flying high. Yeah. Sometimes if not, you get more need. fucking problems. Of course you do. do you more money, I mean? more problems. Yeah. That's a song, mate. It's um, <laughs> yeah. big biggie says it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, but what I'm trying to do is juggle it and try to understand. Like, this is all fucking new to me. Like, I know exactly where I'm going. I know how hard I work. And I only interview people and I love it. And I believe I'm the best at it. I believe what I do is fucking next level. And it's not to blow my own trumpet. I believe that. So why? Do, 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 yeah, do you you got to blow that trumpet, Why James? should I dumb myself down to make other people mm. feel at ease? Why should I bring me down levels to make you feel better? Exactly. It's just because when you start doing well for yourself, other I say it all the time, but you start shining a light and you missed opportunities that why can't I do it? Why can't I achieve? But have you got to be relentless? You've got to be consistent mm. to keep pushing the boundaries consistently mm. and to keep leveling up with success. Just you get more boundaries, you get more obstacles coming mm. your way. And it's, 
the only person that can fail is yourself. It's how mm. far you want to go. I don't give a fuck what age you in your early 20s, 30s, 70s, mm. 80s. Mm. You can keep hustling, you, you can, can keep grinding, you can keep raising the Not bar. Not that I want to be Madonna I'm skinning out in my leotard at 50, yeah. but still Madonna, I rate you for doing it. Yeah, fair play, <laughs> it? I think she's in her fucking 60s now, you know what? <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm shit, sure that's garage music's going to go on that long. I'll probably be about 90 and they'll still be on, I'll be on the stage like, 21 mm-hmm. seconds. <laughs> what about going forward for the future, Lisa? What's, what's your plans? So I managed to start business again mm-hmm. um I've, house of mafia is now not clothing it's interior design and i've been doing it for seven years over the last seven years i've been doing it for friends that are property developers and they've just given me the opportunity to go go and dress this place for us and they give me a few grand here and i just enjoy it it's, that's my creative side that um i has to be fulfilled i have to do something in the creative sort of whether it's music whether it's design whether it's clothing it has to be something creative and House of Mafia is really doing well again. So uh, I've just taken on properties for a massive dis- um, establishment. So I'll be doing that for whenever, how long this bloody pandemic goes yeah. on for. I've got a shop down in um, a salon, hair salon, hair and beauty salon in Margate. That's closed at the moment, but that'll be open again. So I'll be focusing on business until I can get back on stage. And I think once I go, I mean, I DJ now. So you know, I say now I have been for two years. Um, so I think when I go back out, I may go back out as a DJ and musician. I'm, I'm considering albums and stuff like that, but it's so demanding, James. Like once you go in with music, like as soon as you put a record out, if it's successful, that's you. You're in. You're locked in. Or I've been locked in for 21 years off of three albums, three three different an EP and two albums, and that's took 21 years, and it's still going like mm-hmm. do I want to do 21 years <laughs> again yeah. like literally singing from my grave like I don't know if I want to do that and it's and you, and and I feel like I feel like there's other things I need to do now but do what makes you happy I know you yes, spoke exactly. about going back to uni and finishing your nursing degree mm. which is another mm. trophy you can have up in your world that you've achieved something else and yeah. they're still in the pipeline it's still there I believe you probably will go and finish it mm. You, the stylist thing you just got you had a court case over your head you got acquitted for yeah how was that, fuck for that. <laughs> now, again that's a friend that I a friend that I helped it's just a fucking mess but you know what I, I learned a lot out of that and I, like I said that was the same case I was talking about where I was abused for 24 hours and then it just disappeared I was like shit if I was 23 years old I could have killed myself in that 24 hours just off the back of someone saying something on social media for the blogs to then pick it up for it to blow out of control and for everybody to now know this story they don't even know if it's true or not and and even if it was true or not they could have killed someone in that process because 24 hours of abuse was awful but I found it fucking funny because as I said, the, I could see the people, none of my own people were getting at me. They were like, they were calling her names and, you know, calling her things. And I was like, no, nah, you know what, just leave it. It's like my little sis. It's got out of hand. She's young, leave her. And it, like I said, in that 24 hours, I could have topped myself. And that has now led me to want to do something about that and social media, the way they report, the way they people handle things on social media, things you put out, the messages you put out. You've got to be mindful of what you're doing. And I'm thinking of starting some sort of campaign or something for online bullying or something like that. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. But again, people are weak as fuck. That's the they people. Are. They're the weaklings. They're the guys sitting in their phone. But it's hard to... Fi- you know what? Like I said, I was cracking up yeah. being called every racist name under the sun called all these things. I'm thinking, none of you actually know me. You're not even into garage music. Like when I looked into a few of them that were calling me like a black bitch and you ape and all that lot, <clears throat> I looked into their profiles and they were following like <clears throat> no one from the garage scene, no one from the house scene. They were following like all the new kids. They looked about 22, 23 themselves. So, I, you know, it makes you reflect. If it looks like someone that was my age or from my hood, I would have been gutted that they're saying these things about me. But it was because they weren't from my world that I was able to overlook it and being, you know, a bit more clued up. You know, it doesn't really bother me. Sticks and stones, whatever, isn't it? it doesn't matter. But had I been the same person as the keyboard warrior that was doing that, I would have definitely topped myself. It just fucking shows you, though, that words do sting sometimes that... We're all kind of 
vulnerable towards social media that but again it's just men grown men yeah. sitting in their thong yeah. just eating big packets of fucking skittles are just weird yeah do you know like i get i'm not james i know you don't want to hear this year but i get dick pics and it's, <laughs> and it's, i'm sorry i'm still sending is. them no, <laughs> <laughs> james please don't tell me you did it no <laughs> seriously it's like a violation like when you yeah. open that and it's a dick in it you're like really yeah. like really like yeah. are you taking the piss and it hurts my feelings but yeah. again it's like nutters there's nutters yeah. out there I get messages from people you must get tit pics not, I get dick pics I get probably get more dick pics than tits <laughs> but I get messages from people to say your stuff's amazing like we get thousands of, so it's hard to see everyone but then they might so if I'm in my request or something I can only see the messages for that time yeah. I know my that's right I'll, yeah I'll just it miss down. it yeah. yeah yeah but then you'll get your stuff's amazing to then you fucking scumbag I'm going to kill you and you're thinking what, what? yeah people but are you know what weird. they're not even they don't even know you are yeah. read anything mm-hmm. they're just keyboarders that's what people are going to remember yeah, right they're there fucking pussies, they're fucking pussies they're people that yeah. are either not mentally well mm-hmm. Or they're just challenged. They want attention. Yeah. They want to talk. They don't know how to talk. Because I get. I bet you if you sat there and took time out and said, look, why are you saying these things, mate? Like, what's the matter? Like, let, do you want a job or something? Like, what's going on? You'll probably get through to them and start crying or something. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because they're nutters. People like, are weird. But they're weirdos. Because people see you doing well, they think you're, you're free they from... They want to get you. Yeah, they want to try and break you down. So we'll say the weakest and sickest shit. But oh, it's like, you know what? Sometimes it's someone that's a bit closer to you. Yeah. you wanna, I wouldn't be surprised if it's someone you actually know and they mm. want to get at you so they go and make a fake yeah. profile. You do get used to it though. You like, do, I became so immune to it and strong to it. Every abuse I just keep, I just keep kicking on. Yeah. And I think, see when I, every time I level up, I think about the haters. <laughs> yeah. I think, fucking yeah, yes. Yeah, go on. Me, but then you were like, yeah. please, what are they going to say to me this time? If they yeah. didn't fucking say it, yeah. you'd be like, oh, that might have been a shit one. I yeah. might have to, have to do another one. Yeah. <laughs> you were on the Jonathan Ross show, I watched that interview, yeah. but he seemed as if he was picking you out a bit with So Solid Crew, it wasn't. No, do you know what? We've done it from Ross, yeah. I was mentally prepared to get him because he was renowned for getting people on his show, <laughs> taking the piss out of them. So, and I was young, fiery, so suddenly we're going through a bag of shit and I had just got my solo career. And as I said, I was on that circuit. So I had done Buzz Cox, I'd done Jonathan Ross, I'd done This Morning. I was on every show you could think possible. So I kept thinking, as soon as I got to Jonathan Ross, I was like, don't have it. Whatever he says, come at him. Whatever. So I was uptight. So when he was trying to talk to me, I was like being ignorant. <laughs> yeah, so he, I think he like, must have felt so uncomfortable. I regret it because I wanted to say, Jonathan Ross, I really love you. Mm-hmm. But instead I was like... You're taking the piss out of his shoes. Yeah, I was taking the piss out of his <laughs> shoes. And yeah. I was like, like giving him short answers because I didn't want to get into it too much in case he started on me. And there was a lot of stigma around So Solid. So I had that pressure. I was taking on 30 odd boys troubles on that stage with massive on a massive platform like Jonathan Ross do you know what I mean like and I'm an overthinker for this interview I've been thinking about it for about a month like what am I going to say mm, what if he asked this and it's like oh, I, I phrase it in so many different ways to mentally prepare myself because mm. I'm a person I, I like to know you know so with Jonathan Ross, I think I'm making him a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, like, fuck it. Bless him. But that's a mega show as well. Like, the yeah. views that they get, even back then, you're talking 10, 15 million views. That's yeah, just yeah. going to enhance your career. Yeah. So going through all that then, a life, but a roller coaster, you're still kicking on, which yeah. is good to see. Still happy. <laughs> Listen, we're always going to battle. We're always yeah. going to do yeah. it. Do you think you could go down the solo route again? Do it all again? Yeah, Are you not, fucking not kidding so me? solid crew, <laughs> but a solo, because we're not trying to release something. I know you're writing films as well, is that correct? Yeah, so I've been working with, I've been really fortunate, James. Mm-hmm. I've been really fortunate to meet some incredible people. I've had a good assistant from So Young Sam. He's got my back, that boy. Yeah, he's a good guy, Yeah, man. he's a yeah, good yeah. guy. And he will do all of the back work. Sam is just my backbone, you know, in all my projects. And I've been fortunate to just meet people. And, I've, and I'm not one to go, no, I can't do that. If somebody says, can you film a film? Yes. Can you write a script? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I've been, you know, forced into being a musician. I, it was Demlock's dream to be musicians. It was my lucky star to be a musician. And I had to self-teach myself to be a musician. I didn't get to have 
that whole talent thing and it came from young it was there but I just didn't exhaust it I didn't know how so for teaching myself that and I became someone I think I can teach myself into anything of course you've got to believe it yeah. you've got that self-belief so I wouldn't say it was your lucky stars but remember you've took the chances to do that you've put yourself on the front line to do that yeah you have always took the risk yeah and that's where you'll get the present and the reward is when you <laughs> jump through the, sometimes and take it's the, the risk. hindrance though. of course that is but <laughs> <laughs> you, like, the, the the glory in that is always at the other side of fear mm. like, you've always took chances you've always took risks and mm. we're granted the second half of our life the both of us and it's I'm just taking more risks mm. but it's fucking I think now I can confidently confidently know what I can and can't do like nowadays I won't just say yes like I used to say yes because I felt bad to say no but now I'm more think about if it's going to benefit me. So that's why some people just hate me now because now I just won't say yes. Like, I'm not going to just yeah. go with it. <laughs> for anybody watching that's maybe been getting trolled, uh, what advice would you give for them? In my career, in what I've done, yeah. shh, don't do it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no joking. Uh, I just think, like, make sure that your team, like, your circle's right because sometimes you think your circle's right and they're not like your nearest and dearest sometimes don't want you to succeed. So it's best that you it's best that you choose the right team and keep it very small and know who you're dealing with and try and do as much on your own. Like just have confidence, like learn to have confidence in yourself because doing it better sometimes it's better on your own. Yeah. Do you think it'd be easier to make it with your song twenty one seconds getting released now than it would be twenty years ago with social media? Ah, uh, 21 seconds is a legend. I think that could make it any year. Timeless. Yeah, timeless. Definitely. I mean, it's still playing. We still get a royalty from that shit. How do you feel <laughs> with like, no fans and stuff? Are you, are you missing it? Because I know you can still tour, you and Romeo. So, what, since the pandemic? Yeah. Oh, mate. I think, like, social. I didn't realise how much my life is about socialising. Um, as much as I'm a shy person, as much as I grew up, like, like that... I've learned to love it and it helps me be a more confident person by being thrown into it and being on the stage with a bunch of strangers, drunk bunch of strangers that can say heckle you or anything and you please them, you see them jumping and laughing and they want to kiss you and take a picture. That shit is, that shit will make you thrive. That shit will make you strong. Mm -hmm. And I miss that. I miss being on the stage in, and, and it's the gig I got. It's the work I got. It's the work I've hustled. I love that. I love that in any business, but in doing it when you're in the, on the stage, when there's so many other artists in your category, in your lane, in your genre, all the garage girls, and I've been chosen to go on that stage a thousand times. I love that. That's, that makes you thrive. What was it like playing at festivals with So Solid crew? I didn't get to really do it with So Solid. Do any of that yeah, shit? I didn't get to really do it. So I more recently booked So Solid to do festivals nowadays. Mm -hmm. Not all of them, but a lot of them, I, uh, you know, I, I am the agent for So you, Solid as well. Was it 2010 the first time he's done a tour? Sorry? Was 2010 the first time he's done a tour, the comeback? Was it 10 or 13? Was it 10? I don't know. I can't remember. I don't remember it if it's be. 2010 or 2013. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was the very first tour we had <laughs> ever done. No, no, I'm lying. We did a tour with Christine Aguilera all over Europe. We done a tour with John Ashanti, but that was Romeo's tour. And then we done the fight. I done the... See... This is the difference. I done it. Like, I got to do all three tours. I done the Oxane and Trino tour, Five Night Stand, I think it was called, with MTV. I done the Jar and Ashanti tour with Romeo on his solo career because I was on some of his records. And then the So Solid tour, we had done the whole of Europe with Christine Aguilera. Who was she? That was fucking sick. What was that? Yeah, that was sick. That She's was so good. Voice, we did. We like. We got to meet her. I got to meet her a couple of times on tour, but it was very brief. Like they were huge. I mean, we paid for that. Like when you're on tour as a support act, you pay a contribution to that tour to be part of it. They pick you, but we have to pay our contribution to be on that tour. So it was sick. Like we got. That's where we got most of like a European exposure from. What other kind of people did you meet? We ever starstruck. Oh my God, Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown at the Versace Hotel mm. in Miami on, on uh, what's that, something drive, what's it called? Sa Rodeo. Rodeo, no, Rodeo. no, 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 South Beach something, something. I can't remember, South, South Beach somewhere, I don't know, in, in Miami, the main strip. That was amazing, trying to peep through, old Nokia camera phone, peeping through to try to take pictures, she caught mm. me, she said, hey, come over. I was like, oh! mm -hmm. <laughs> That was amazing. Uh, Diana Ross at the Mobos, amazing. Um, 
Duran Duran had done a massive shoot in Dur uh, with Duran Duran in for Vogue, British Vogue with Mara Testino, a top, top, top photographer. That was pretty amazing because I grew up on Duran Duran because of my, I had my white side and my black side. I listened to Bob Marley on one side mm. and Marvin Gaye and then I was listening to <laughs> Duran Duran and Pet Shop Boys on the yeah. other side. <laughs> <laughs> but you speak about your career as well. You've got a big grin in your face so you yeah. can see how much you actually love it. Yeah. I, mm. I've learned to, I, I, things like this, honestly, this interview has reacquainted me with my career memories. And when you bring them up, it does make me smile because there are so many horrible things that happened during my career, but so many amazing things that I could, I, one thing you can't ever take away from me is my memories of what I saw through my eyes, you know? And, um, and that just makes me happy. Yeah, that's the best thing. But <laughs> all the external shit doesn't mean fuck all no. that we crave the money because we want, we think the attention. Yeah. But when you break that down and you actually start getting it, you start yeah. realizing that doesn't fulfill yeah, it me. Does. It's, <laughs> it's the memories that last. Yeah. It's the memories when you like you sitting there mentioning that you realize, oh, you get a realization that fuck me, I've actually had a great life. Yeah. Even though you went through misery and torment, but yeah. so is everybody else, yeah. and they haven't experienced yeah. the good stuff that you've experienced. People yeah. just go through torment and misery and don't and have any good. And don't have the good yeah. to go with it. Like I sometimes now I've started to sit back and try to remember that shit when I'm down because that will pull you through. Because as I'm smiling now and it brings me joy and the memories start coming back and you're like, oh yeah, that was so sick. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you need to do when you're down. And, that, and, that, and that's what I try, I'm trying to do now in life in general, because yeah. it keeps you going. That's the only thing you can yeah. do is keep you going. You just got to yeah. keep kicking on. Yeah. What do you think now, looking back at your career and what you've done in the music industry? I think, wow, Leash, you did that. Mm -hmm. Like, whoa. Coming from Brixton. <laughs> from Brixton, Loughborough Junction. Yeah. From d having nothing and having nothing again for so many times, you know, through my career. It's not it never promised the music industry. It goes up, down. It's like a roller coaster. It's right up, right down, right up. You know, I went from being signed for a quarter of a million to having a thousand pounds in my bank, like on one show every weekend, to having another seventy grand, to having absolutely Did you waste nothing. a lot of money, Lisa? Oh yeah, the first time round. <laughs> I have four cars on my drive. <laughs> but I did have a property. And luckily that's one thing that even though I didn't have anyone around me that had a st stable job, that had been to university and secured a career, that put money into trust funds for their children for when they're 18 and they want their first car. I didn't have anyone, I did that myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I bought my first house with my first deal money. And I bought my second house and my third house. And I, luckily I had all of those things to back me up when shit hit the van and yeah. I had nothing because as much as I had a thousand pounds in my bank account I had property to fall back on and that's what's helped me today is that I still got that money to fall back on and I still got properties to fall back on luckily because had I not had that the amount of times I've hit the van I probably hit the bottle yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would have hit the bottle yeah. I probably would have took drugs as well just yeah. mash up on drugs because when you go down, you go down. You feel like nothing and no one, and no one cares about you. You you remember everyone that's been horrible to you. You remember all the things you ain't got anymore, and and that shit can tear you apart. Oh yeah, being man. famous as well. Yeah, because you, you want to escape, don't you? Yeah, well, and as well, you when you go down in a normal world, if you run out of money, just go and get a better job, don't you? Right. But when you've been famous, you feel like you can't do normal. Because yeah. working in a normal shop for your ego, it's worse than actually having no money. That's what you tell yourself, right? And I, when I went down the first time, I was like, shit, I might as well go and stack some shelves in Tesco's. Mm -hmm. But there's something that's just what you'd rather suffer without money than say, let me go and get a regular job because your fame is still there and the money runs out, but the fame stays there. For, it stayed there the whole time. And people will recognise you, so you're like, F that, I'm not going to you work in. Up. I'd you rather up, yeah. sit here eating beans on toast, <laughs> yeah? Because <laughs> your ego won't allow you, yeah. and yet your pocket is saying, help, But it's fucked up how yeah, attention and outside noise can affect you mentally, yeah? Mm -hmm. Lisa, it's been phenomenal having you Thank on today. You. Would you like to finish up on anything? 
Uh, just whoever's out there that needs to hear it, just keep going because it never, nothing bad ever lasts. Yeah, ever. Lisa, absolute warrior. Can't Thank wait you. to see what you do for the rest Thank of you the so future. Much. And thanks for coming on today. Thank you. God bless. <laughs>